Increasing cases of rape and sexual violence against women and even underage girls continues to dominate discussions in Nigeria, with the demand for justice getting louder. While the police is still battling to fish out the culprits who raped and murdered 22-year-old Uniben undergraduate Waila Omozua, so many other cases have been reported. Amongst these is the case of Barakat Belu, who was allegedly raped and murdered in her home in Ibadan. In Jigawa, a 12-year-old girl was allegedly raped, raped by 11 men who have been arrested and detained. Nigerians are calling for stiffer penalties for rape offenders. Some have suggested castration, while others are seeking the death penalty. Joining me via Skype from the United Kingdom is uh, the founder, IA Foundation, Runke Adiagbo. Good morning. Thank you for joining us on TVC Breakfast. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Now, rape is a crime against the state. And if you look at how the country has handled it so far, what do you say it has uh, addressed this issue as such, that is, as a crime against the state? Right. Um, my heart goes out to families that have lost their girl child to rape, and I pray that the Lord will console them. Um, however, um, this is really like a pandemic in a pandemic, actually, um, because rape has been going on for quite a long time. It's just that it's become very prevalent now. And my suspicion is that it's really down to the pandemic because many people have been in lockdown for such a long time and it's creating mental health challenges. And as you know, the hotels are closed and some people have lost their job. So it's making them gravitate towards harassing people and committing lots of sexual crime. Now, what I think the state needs to do, I mean, it's quite commend commendable what has been done so far. And actually, the National House of Assembly actually are looking at reviewing the laws and making it more stiffer. So that's a welcome development. However, what I think we also need to do more is to actually invest in our police force to make sure they can understand and be more sympathetic to rape victims. Because it's not easy to come forward when you've been raped. So we need them to be more specialized in the way they deal with women when they are reporting rape incidents. That, on the one hand, is one issue, but let's look at uh, the offenders now. Uh, you have said that uh, perhaps uh, as a result of the lockdown, a lot of pe persons are becoming aggressive. Uh, but then again, it is not just about being aggressive. For a long time before now, before the pandemic, this has been on, like you rightly pointed out. What could be the root cause? Yeah. I think personally, this is down to the conditioning of our male child. I think most parents spend a lot of time training their girl child and they tend to forget or the, the male child goes on the back burner. I think we need to incorporate in, in our male child that you need to treat women with decency. You need to treat women as a revered human being just like you. You have no right to actually intrude on people's privacy without their permission and without their content. We need to imbibe this conditioning into our young, young boys as they are growing up. Also, I think it's also a general conditioning whereby men obviously feel superior to women and they feel, you know what, I can violate your body as I deem fit. This is not right and we need to change this mentality within the men folk. Now, if we are to uh bring about segmentation now talking about those that can bring about change uh there, it begins some say it begins from the home others say perhaps opinion leaders uh, such as religious uh, leaders could also influence persons who are prone to carrying out this act talk to us about the responsibilities of each of these groups to addressing this issue yeah, I think in the first instance, as I said, it starts from the home, as you rightly said as well. It's about ensuring that our young boys actually respect values and they actually understand how to treat individuals. Forget that they are women for a minute. They are individuals just like you. The way no one will allow anyone, would like anyone to assault them, they shouldn't think they have the right to assault other people. And also, whilst they are growing up, I'm sure, as you rightly said, religious leaders have got a big role to play in terms of imbibing 
in these young people that you cannot go around harassing people. It's not right. It's not fair. They're human beings just like you, and their body is not for public consumption. It's only when they give consent that you can do such things. Also, I think it's about um, the mindset. The mindset of some young men is not well developed, and they just believe once they get to puberty, it's an opportunity to explode and actually experiment and sow their wide oats all over the place. So it's about conditioning our young men, reorientating them to make them understand that they need to respect the woman body. Ronka Adeagbo, thank you so much for speaking with us. Of rape and sexual violence against women and even underage girls continues to dominate discussions in Nigeria with the demand for justice getting louder. While the police is still battling to fish out the culprits who raped and murdered 22-year-old Uniben undergraduate Waila Mozwa, so many other cases have been reported. Amongst these are the case of Barakat Belu, who was allegedly raped and murdered in her home in Ibadan. In Jigawa, a 12-year-old girl was allegedly raped by 11 men who have been arrested and detained. Nigerians are calling for stiffer penalties for rape offenders. Some have suggested castration, while others are seeking the death penalty. Joining me via Skype from the United Kingdom is founder IA Foundation, Runke Adiagbo. Thank you for joining us on TVC Breakfast. Well, there's been uh, so much call for justice and uh, a lot of persons are calling for a castration as perhaps a measure that will stem the tide of uh, rape. And others are saying a declaration of a state of emergency is what is needed. I wonder what you make of this. Is that the way to go? Right, that's a very interesting one because um, at the moment, I understand the penalty, the highest penalty you can get for rape is life imprisonment. Now, this does not solve the problem because the fact that you lock them away does not solve the problem because they could even harass people within their, their cells. Now, I think these men, they need help uh, because they find it very difficult to restrain themselves. Therefore, if they find it difficult to restrain themselves, this sort of men need to go to rehab, like we have people go to rehab for drug issue. Clearly, these guys have got sex, uh, sex challenges, and they need to go to rehab to develop themselves. But how also, do you help someone who does not accept that he needs help? I mean, obviously, for, they need to have committed the offense for you to be able to know they've got that problem. So the decision is not theirs any longer. It is for the authority to say, you know what, you are not in the right frame of mind. You cannot control your manhood. Therefore, you need to go to re rehabilitation for us to re rehabilitate you to understand that you have no right to violate any woman's rights. But wouldn't well, that be infringing on their own rights as well? Yeah, but if you, you've got an asset from God which you cannot control by yourself, then someone needs to be controlling it for you. Surely. All right. Now, if we are to declare a state of emergency, as some are calling for, what would it be in specific terms for you? Um, I would say, um, I wouldn't say we, we've gotten to that stage yet. I think mm. we need to have some procedural issues which we need to address before we can get, because that, I think, is the actually end of the scale. I think in terms of safeguarding our children, I know in Nigeria we've got the sex register like, like we have in the UK, but mm -hmm. how many employers check the sex register before employing people, right? How many organizations make sure the people they are employing are actually the people they are actually employing? Because people do impersonate themselves, people impersonate people. Secondly, what would also be useful for the government of the day to introduce is hopefully if, um, uh, as I said, um, life imprisonment is actually a good deterrent, but maybe ultimately castration might be the solution to the problem because as you know castration is an upgrade of vasectomy. So hopefully once the instrument is not there, maybe they might not be able to commit the crime any longer, but they might still be alive, which actually is a benefit for them. They are not um, actually locked up for the rest of their lives. There are also concerns about the fact that some states are yet to domesticate the Child Rights Act. About 11 states are yet to do that. And now the question is, how do you ensure state actors take the right step to address this? 
Now, this is where the federal government needs to play big brother here. Because there's no point having legislation and the states are not complying with it. The government is, the central government needs to come down hard on state governments who are not implementing this legislation to protect the children. Because we need to safeguard these kids because they cannot safeguard themselves. And it will be irresponsible of any state government not to implement this legislation. Now, children are meant to be going back to school very soon. An average parent in Nigeria will be scared of sending their girl child to school now because they, they feel they'll be vulnerable to sexual attacks. We cannot afford to keep our girl's child at home because we've got some people on the street that cannot control themselves. So therefore, the government, the state government, have no choice than to make sure they implement this and not just implement, they actually police it and make sure it's actually happening. Ronke Adeogbo, thank you for speaking with us.